welcome brothers, sisters in Christ and also friends following us to one more streaming of the Life for All Institute today directly from the auditorium of the church in Sao Paulo. Today it is the Lord's Day, it's Sunday. Let us make our offerings honoring the Lord with our possessions. Remember, missions abroad, with these offerings, we supply, support the work of God in different continents. And also, remember the Sanchez mine, the Aves mine, and also the Life for All Institute, which, thanks to it, we are receiving these streamings at home. And also, remember your original needs and the work of the Lord, whether partners of the gospel or another item in the work. And also, remember the church in your city. May the Lord bless it. May the gospel to be preached through the churches, through the saints, for the Lord's kingdom come one day sooner. Now we got to message 29. The king sends his apostles. Scripture reading, it is Matthew chapter 10, verse 1 through 42. Today, I want to make sure to mention that we are very much honored by the saints who came. We had wonderful fellowship with them these two days with the saints coming from Bahia, representing Bahia and Sergipe, and also the saints who came from the state of Rio de Janeiro with Expo books going there raise many fruits, and also the saints from Foz do Iguaçu, they are here with us in fellowship these days, and also a number of other churches which are present here, especially the saints from the south of Minas, coming many saints from Virginia and different neighboring cities. So we feel very honored with their presence together to enjoy the prophetic word, the word of the Lord. We are next seeing how the Lord in Matthew chapter 9, he begins reporting the healing of a paralytic man. That is, we were all paralyzed for the work of God, made unuseful to do the will of God because of sin. Sin came in man, and death through sin passed unto every man. They all sinned and fall short from, from the glory of God. And Romans 3 tells us that there, there is no one who can understand, no one who seeks God, they were all led astray and became unprofitable. We were made unprofitable by sin. But I thank God, the king came down from the mountain to heal us. We are being healed from our paralysis. We are no longer here to, we, 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 we were not profitable to do the will of God, but he did not give up on us, he came and healed us. I remember the book of Philemon, remember Brother Dong spoke very much in that, our famous Onesimus, Onesimus was a slave, because of sin, he ended up being enslaved by sin in the world. But Paul, through the gospel, released him. He had defrauded his Lord, and he had fled from his Lord. But one day, the Lord captured him. Paul wrote a letter to Philemon to receive him, to say that before he was useless, but now he became useful. To Philemon, and also he was useful to Paul. That is why, brothers and sisters, I thank God we were unuseful by sin, unprofitable, but now we are useful to God, so much so that yesterday, right, praise God for the young people's outing, 
the army of the overcomers and by the uh, Godspeed young one. According to our statistics, recorded up to this moment, more than 3,000 young ones went out and nearly a thousand brothers, elderly saints, went out. So it is uh, went out for this great war, rescuing people out on the streets. Yesterday was a great victory for the Lord. I believe that more and more we are fulfilling our role of rescuing people out of the world to influence those people because we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. We were paralytic, but now we are functioning, being used by God through the preaching of the gospel. I praise God. And next, not only sin made us unuseful, but also saints, religion, the old religion and the new religion make us unuseful. Because right on after chapter 9, the disciples of John the Baptist came to question Jesus. Why? We, the disciples of John the Baptist, fast and the Pharisees also fast. The Pharisees represent the old religion, the Jewish religion. John the Baptist represents the new religion because John the Baptist, dear brothers and sisters, he came in to operate in a setting totally apart from the old religion. He was a priest. He should be operating in the temple, serving in the temple, the sanctuary, right? But he went in the wilderness to cry out, a voice crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. Repent for the kingdom of heaven, says John here. And he did not eat of fine food in the temple, but he ate of locusts and wild honey. And also he clothed, not in fine linen clothing of a priest, but of camel's hair. He was rude. Someone who was crying out in the wilderness, and the Pharisees went to him to be baptized by him. He said, Brood of vipers, who induced you to flee from the coming wrath. That is, he was very aggressive, very strong, because he was full of the Holy Spirit, totally outside of the sphere of the old religion and Judaism. But when he baptized Jesus, he testified that he was the one whom I told you that would come after me. He is mightier than I am. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire, not worthy to carry his sandals. So when he baptized Jesus, he testified. Holy Spirit coming down upon Jesus, right, as a dove, the voice saying, He is my beloved Son, in whom I have my delight. So he was a witness of all of that, since that his role it is to bring in Christ. He did his work, he had completed his work, actually he had nothing else to do. We should just join in to the victorious procession and followers of Jesus. Yet, he did not finish his ministry. He continued his ministry because there were many disciples following him, still baptizing, ended up making a new religion. That is why, brothers and sisters, Religion also makes us paralyzed. We who are for many years in the church life, especially the living ones for a long time in the church, have to be careful, saints, not to end up going besides what we should go and end up making a new religion. And the religion, saints, disturbs the Lord. The Spirit wants to do new things, but we, with our old concept of the old religion, we prevent the Lord. And we end up being unuseful. This new phase of the action of the Spirit, the action of the seven spirits in the age of conclusion of Revelation. Therefore, saints, 
Let us ask the Lord to cleanse us. To cleanse us from old religion and also from the new religion. Let us every day to ask the Lord to keep us in a humble spirit and repented spirit. O espírito arrependido significa um espírito que a repented spirit means a spirit that is always making a transfer, changing plane. If we are to be used to what we are doing, but in the earthly plane, we end up forming a different religion. Since we want to change our plane. To be transferred into the heavenly plane, to follow the Lord, the King, and the Kingdom of Heaven. That is why we need the, the humble spirit, the repentant spirit. Never think that you know something that you are for many years in the church, many years in the work of God. You can do this. This will only disturb the action of the spirit. But I praise God. God also healed us from that because. We cannot put new, new cloth in an old garment because there is a retraction power that ends up tearing it. And also, you cannot put new, new wine into old wine skin. If you put that, everything that the Lord is doing again, by the Spirit, the dynamic co-porting, young ones connected, uh, Care networks, the network of cares, center of welcoming, and the, the network of care in the church, cooperating by the hour, cooperating by the opportunity, the whole church going out. May I pray for you? That is, if you want to put that as a new cloth in the old structure, this will not work. So, saints, everything will tear. To put no wine into old wineskins. So let us be renewed. Let us keep our spirit in a humble way, always with a broken heart, and follow in a humbly way the Lord. The Lord in a humbly way. The next on chapter 9 speaks of healing of the Jairus' daughter, representing the Jews. She was for 12 years. Uh, she was 12, and it's a complete number for this. God cared for the Jews for a complete period. When she was 12, she died. That is representing their rejection of the Jews toward the kingdom of heavens. Jesus actually came first to save the ones of the house of Israel. He came first to seek the lost sheep, but Israel rejected the Lord. John 1 says that he came for his own, but his own did not receive him. Did not receive him. So, saints, we had the great mercy, received mercy uh, that by the rejection of the Jews when Jairus' daughter was 12. Actually, at that period, God was with the Jews. We were suffering of a loss of blood. On the way, Jesus found a woman. She was suffering for 12 years. And uh, she touched his garments. And the, Jesus realized a virtue came out of him. This woman represents the Gentiles. We were for 12 years losing blood. Our life was leaking. The more time goes by, the more uh, life comes out of us. There's, our life will be pointless, but through this, the Jews' rejection, the Lord turned to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were saved by faith. Jesus said to her, Your faith healed you. So I praise God. The only gateway for the kingdom of heaven, saints, it is through faith. We believed in Jesus and we entered through this door. Therefore, saints, do not change your door. I have to keep on living by faith. And I praise God, saints, the book of Numbers 15 tells us, 
sorry to spend this time here, but I think it's quite important that the book of Numbers 15, verse 38, here we read, Speak to the children of Israel, tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generation and to put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners. So these tassels are the rim of the clothing and uh, there's a blue thread in them. You know, blue is a heavenly color. That is, blue represents the kingdom of heaven. It represents that the, the here the tassels of the corners which is the heavenly government. Why do I say corners of the, gar the garment? And here we read, you, and you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. That is, the commandment, the fulfilling of the commandment, isn't that a government? Is it a government or not? They are blue, uh, thread, heavenly. The commandments, who's in charge and who's fulfilling the charge, the commandment? God and us, right? So God, the kingdom of heavens, he commands. Gives a voice of command, the word of voice. The word of God, it is an order. And we are here to fulfill the, the commandment of the Lord. This is the meaning of the government of heavens. So the kingdom of heavens functions in this way. Functions, the king and the kingdom of heavens commands. A voice of command through his word we believe in this word and we obey it and we practice this word that is why i think this is a very important verse so when we get to the book of romans romans 1 what does it say we believe right we entered through this door by faith and for what first to live a good life to, because i'm a christian now i'll go to heaven is, is that it, the way it is? No, when we believe, we enter through this door by faith. Do not forget that you are under a heavenly government. And the government implies in obedience. If you are in a government, you have to obey the laws and authority of that government. Isn't that right? So, Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Here we read, through whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all for his name. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. That is, the Gentiles entered through this door by faith. Who enters by the door in the kingdom of heavens? It is to obey. So we don't have our own freedom. We do not do the will of our flesh anymore, right or not. But many Christians, they do not know that. And in Romans, the last chapter of Romans, Romans chapter 16, let me go straight to 26, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations, the prophetic scriptures is the sequence of prophetic words. For what? Prophetic word is for what? According to the command of, for obedience to the faith. According to the command of the for us in God, for obedience to the faith. So the prophetic word are the commandments of the Lord for obedience to the faith, because there is a heavenly government. And we have no freedom to do what we want. Actually, I forgot to continue in Numbers, right? There explains to us that, right? There explains in the end. Verse 39, to remember all the commandments of the Lord, to fulfill them, and you shall not follow the desires of your heart. That is, you have no more freedom. Once we entered through the door of faith, once we receive the prophetic word, brothers and sisters, we have no more freedom to do according to the desires of our heart. We have no more 
or more freedom to do things according to our eyes and through which, after which we entered at the time of the Gentiles for 12 years, uh, tampering, adultering, having loss of blood. But now, saints, let us no longer live with this loss of blood. We'll be under the heavenly government, receiving with affection, with love, revering love, the word of the Lord, fulfilling the word, obeying the Lord to his government, and I pray the Lord, what are we doing today? This is what we're doing today. The Lord is blessing us very much. Let us continue. Oh, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. So, the Lord will get to the end. Just to sum, sum it up, in the end, the Lord goes in every city and villages, preaching the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all sorts of diseases and infirmities. Saints, our king is desperate. Because here on earth, under the empire of darkness, this authority of darkness, it is collapsing human beings. Corruption is coming in, death and sin. It is simply putting an end to human society because the thief is only coming to rob, steal, and destroy. Satan has no other intention, no good intention. He wants to steal man, to rob man, and to destroy man from God. To make man unuseful, praise God that the king healed us from our paralysis. And now, saints, we also go out with the Lord Jesus to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And when he saw the crowds, the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Saints, this is the exact situation today. When we go out to preach the gospel, praying with people, not rarely, people begin to burst into tears because they cannot stand anymore. These people are extremely afflicted, suffering, and they have not, they have nothing even to open up with. They are really weary and scattered. They have no sense. They're working, working, and see no sense in the world. Everything is about the same under sin, under the slavery saints. We realize this urgency in the king's heart. We want to cooperate and do the same thing. That is why next, Jesus said, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is really plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. The harvest is really plentiful. The field is plentiful, but there are very few laborers. Even in Brazil today, we have Many millions of inhabitants. Our population is very big. We in Brazil, we only have 300 and some co-porters. Few workers for millions of people. But saints, and praise God, we are beginning to meet the Lord's need, the, 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 the people's needs, added up to the work of co-porters. We have the Godspeed young one. Young ones are reinforcing that. Because the dynamic co-porters are our elite squad working in the front line of the battle and backing them up are the young ones. Even it's very beautiful. The, the little ones with 5, 6, 12, 15, they're doing the work of grown-ups, praying with people. And how many people are saved and rescued out for this work of the Godspeed young one? And also... Women are, are doing a beautiful job reaching many other women. And the work, saints, the contact that is generated both by the Godspeed young one, our preaching of the gospel, we are getting many contacts. It seemed that by yesterday, well, we were able to register well, more than 600 new contacts only yesterday by the Godspeed young one. So these contacts 
They need to be cared for. They need, because people are asking for help, they're asking for assistance. Let us not be with a hardened heart. Let us care for people. Not only that, since now, with the whole church also going, cooperating by the hour, the whole church uh, to discover that they can have a living, a living of praying for people. You go to a bakery, a store, a department store, find somebody in a trans transportation, you find somebody in the street and say, may I pray for you? You go to get some gas, may I pray for you for the attendant? So you can rescue many people to also get new contacts and bring it to the network of care, or then you care for it yourself. So God today, in fact, He is finding the cooperation of His church. We want the Lord to bless us, the GTCs, to bring forth even more co-porters, that we have a goal before the Lord in the next two to three years to reach a number of a thousand dynamic co-porters on the streets. And I believe that by then, more brothers and sisters in the churches will be preaching the gospel. That has really influenced this world. Then we get to chapter 10. Chapter 10, the Lord then calls His 12 disciples. And Jesus gave them authority, power over unclean spirits, the demons, to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. disease. The whole world is possessed. Not that uh, many times somebody is possessed physically, but we're living under this yoke of possession. We need to release the lover, the earth, from this demon possessing. The Lord gave us authority. He gave us authority, power to unclean uh, and to heal people. They are all uh, ill and with, this, with diseases. And we are called to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. Now, the name of the twelve apostles, you notice the difference. From verse 1, he says that the Lord called his twelve disciples. And on verse 2, he says that the Lord sends these twelve disciples and sending made those disciples apostles. Do you understand? So an apostle, it is someone sent out by God with a command or instructions. That is why the Lord next gave them instructions. Someone who was appointed to fulfill what God wants, right? So this is the meaning of an apostle. An apostle it is someone sent out to fulfill the commandment of God. Now these twelve disciples, saints who became apostles, twelve apostles, when they were sent out, they were mentioned their names in pairs. First pair, Simon, who's called Peter, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. This is the first pair, Simon, Peter, and Andrew. Second pair is James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. James, Zebedee, and John, Zebedee. The third pair is Philip and Bartholomew. Fourth pair is Thomas and Matthew. Maybe because of the fact that Matthew, the author of this gospel, he, he uh, by being humble, he put Thomas first. Why? Because both in Mark 3.18 and in Luke 6.15, it also records the name of the twelve. You see Matthew first. Matthew and Thomas. Matthew in his record, he puts Thomas ahead. Thomas and Matthew. The fifth pair, it is James, the son of Alphaeus and Libels, whose surname was Thaddeus. The sixth it is Simon, uh, and Judas Iscariot. 
and you know him, right? So the twelve brothers and sisters, the twelve, they have a special place in the economy of God, in the eyes of God, so much so that they will be part of the twelve foundations, right? Well, let us read it. The twelve foundations of the wall corresponds to the twelve stones, which actually twelve apostles have a special place. And also, why do they have a special place? Because they are eyewitnesses. They are eyewitnesses of everything that happened to Jesus. Let us read Luke 1, 2. Luke 1, 2. Just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, delivering them to us. You understand? So they are special. They have this... They stood out in God's eyes. The first ones who saw Jesus, everything that happened to Jesus, this is also in Second Peter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 16. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables, When we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And when we heard this voice which came from heaven, when we were with him on the holy mountain. That is, they were people who followed from the beginning. So who is part of that? Let us read Acts chapter 1. When there was a need for filling the number of the twelve, because Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, they had only eleven. They need to replace them. So in verse Acts 1, 24. Here we read. Uh, and they pray and You Lord, now who, who know the hearts of all, show which of these you you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Jesus by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. So who is qualified to take part in this ministry and apostleship? Because the twelve apostles, they have a special place. Already said in God's plan. So let us read it. Verse 21. This, this is the qualification. Therefore of these men have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. As well, they have a special place because they were eyewitnesses. And beginning from the baptism of John to that day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So the twelve apostles are eyewitnesses of resurrection of Christ, which they accompanied from the baptism of John the Baptist to the day that he was taken on high. So these are the twelve apostles, which again, repeat, they have a special place in the Bible. Okay? And the king begins to give instructions from verse 5 through 15, Matthew 10, 5 through 15. These are the instructions to whom Jesus was sending. Let us get there. Matthew 10, 5. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of, Samar of the Samaritans, but go rather 
but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So saints, Jesus came in to seek first the go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. John 1, 11. Let us read it. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. He came specifically to Israel. He came, Israel did not receive him. That is why in Romans 11, Paul describes that. Romans 11. I don't have time to go over into much detail, but at least, some main verses you will get to know. Romans 11, 8. What does it say? Just as it is written, God has given them a spirit of stupor, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear to this very day. And David says, Let their table become a snare and a trap stumbling block and a recompense to them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they do not see and bow down their back always. Let me ask, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not, but through their fall? Why not? Because God not abandoned them at, at all, Israel at all. God will save Israel. That's why he says, Certainly not, but through their fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Now, if their fall is riches for the world and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? That is, when they got to the fullness of the Jews, then glory will be twofold. So we have to thank God for this opportunity. We entered by the door of this opportunity by the rejection of the Jews. We have to praise the Lord and the history of the healing of the servant of Jairus. Remember that I said the woman with the flow of blood in Matthew 9 records exactly that. And it was finished 12 years of the, the, the girl it was exactly 12 years that the woman suffering from a loss of blood, she was healed. So pray the Lord we were healed. For those who believed, right? And on verse, still Romans 11, verse 25. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, as it should be wise in your opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Saints, we are living in this period from the rejection of Israel to until God again remembered Israel at the end of the church age. So we are already living the end of the church age close to the fullness of the time of the Gentiles. That is why, saints, let us take our opportunities, take our chances. Thank God for this opportunity. Lord Jesus, here on verse 23, let me see. 23 says, they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. In verse 26, And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away in godliness from Jacob. Matthew 23, Lord Jesus. Matthew 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who, the one who kills the prophets 
and stones those were sent to her. How often I wanted to go rather your children together, to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This means what, brothers and sisters? We the Gentiles receive this grace in this period, even though also there are Jews saved in the Spirit, just like Paul was an example, clear example that he was saved, greatly used by God. So there are Jews, but in general, the Jews rejected Jesus. This opened up an opportunity for us who were not the Jews. We were saved by faith. And the Jews have another opportunity. When is this opportunity? We got to the end of times, when the fullness of time is finished of the Gentiles, they, he will save the end. The Jews will recognize that he is the Christ, the Messiah. They will ask for help and to call on the name of the Lord. And then Israel will be saved. They have this opportunity. We Gentiles, we don't. That is why we have to enter through this door by faith, by faith. Amen. Just say, blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord at the end of times. Blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us take advantage of that opportunity is with us. Let us be faithful to the Lord. And why not to enter into the city of the Samaritans? Because the Samaritans there were also people of mixed blood. You remember that king of Assyria had taken the kingdom of the north captive, the kingdom of Israel, to the city of Assyria and brought in people of Assyria to settle in the region of Samaria. So they became a people with mixed race. That is why up until now, the record of the Bible, we see that the Jews do not get along with the Samaritans. Considered Samaritan, some, somebody mixed. Well, this is not also to enter in the city of Samaritans to preach the gospel because Jesus commanded the twelve to preach the gospel first to the house of Israel. But when they were, he was rejected, the Lord leaves the house of Israel to his second coming. And the remnant of Israel will convert and will be saved. Then this word, the kingdom of heavens is at hand. Matthew 10, right? Verse 7, right? And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, the one sent out by God, the twelve apostles, they're sent out to preach the gospel of the kingdom. We today also, let us not lose our focus. We are on the streets to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Why the gospel of the kingdom? God needs to save people, to convert people, to put them under his government, the heavenly government. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved by the Lord. It's not just to live according to the desires of their heart. Unfortunately, many Christians do not know that. Many Christians continue living, doing their own will, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, as we read in Second, First John 2. Saints, we actually have to preach the gospel so that everyone who is saved, calling on the name of the Lord, believing in the Lord Jesus, and to be what? to come to the obedience by faith, to be under a heavenly government. The king is in charge today. I don't have my own freedom. I do not have a freedom to, uh, for me to go where I want to go, to do what I want to. No, today I am under the heavenly kingdom, the heavenly government. And this gospel says that we should preach. Not only to save people from sin, let us put them under the heavenly government. 
So, when, because here it says that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When, when the kingdom of heaven comes, who knows? After the death and resurrection of Christ, and on the day of the Pentecost, God then brings forth his church. And this generation, the, the church begins, in fact, the kingdom of heaven. That is why the church, brothers and sisters, should be living the reality of the kingdom of heaven. Not only with the appearance, it looks like to be the kingdom of heaven. We want to live in the reality of the kingdom of heaven, which is the church. The one who today lives in the reality of the kingdom of heaven, he will take part in the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven in the coming kingdom. So saints, put that in your mind. One that I'm preaching the gospel to, I will not just um, measure efforts to take him one day to be an overcomer, to take him one day to be together with me in the manifestation of the kingdom of heaven. For that, today, that person needs to be helped to live in the reality of the kingdom of heaven. That is why the church has the network of care. Let us welcome people so that each one of those to live the reality of the kingdom of heavens, each one of us tomorrow to be overcomers in the manifestation of the kingdom of heavens. And the kingdom of heaven, saints, it is the only way for God to come back and reign on earth. In the Old Testament, it was totally inefficient to deal with the people of Israel to government. Why? Because the law that God commanded, it is weak. It cannot deal with the flesh. Once man fell and became flesh. Romans 8, 3, you remember that. Let us read it. Romans 8, 3. We read it. Lord Jesus the law in the Old Testament, for what the law could not do, and that was weak, to deal with the old man, the fallen man. 8.3 4 What the law could not do, in, the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. Did you know that the law was weak because of our flesh? The law became something impossible for God to be able to save the flesh, for God to be able to bring us back to the heavenly government through the law. And God did this by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. He only took on the likeness of sinful flesh. He did not take, take, he did not take on sin, but He condemned sin in the likeness of sinful flesh, on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. If you are to put your thoughts in the things of the mind, in the flesh, you will set your mind to do the things of the flesh. But you set your mind to your thoughts on the different sphere, the heavenly sphere. If you are setting your thoughts in the spirit, you will be doing the things of the spirit which will bring forth life and peace. Lord Jesus. Still, the book of Job, I do not have time to read it for you, but the book of Job reveals that even a man who was considered thorough, straight, and God-fearing, who shunned evil. Remember that. Even God said that before Satan. Even this man, who apparently was God-fearing man, did everything that God wants, but God exposed 
this man, even in this good man, that there were two animals representing the pride of men, soberness of men. Even a good man, you cannot rely on him. Inside of men, there is an animal called behemoth, which looks beautiful, look, looks looks like a toy for children because it's underwater, all with its two ears of a hypo outside with the two eyes. Looks like that you want to just uh, cherish it, but it represents the good side of the soul. I think that the good side of the soul kills more than the evil side of the soul. We have to be very careful with our good part of the flesh because we consider that there's no danger there. But if you let it, let your good side of the soul to be developed, we'll go into the bad side of the soul, we'll turn into a Leviathan. Then we'll be aggressive, we'll destroy it really. It is the king on all the proud animals, and for him there's no one higher than him. He despises the authority of God, he despises God, he is the utmost. He, this is our self, our soul life, our prideness. But praise God, God even exposed this in the book of Job. And God wants us to recognize, saints, that really there's no good in us, not even in the good side of our soul. So the only solution for man, saints, it is to, to transfer plan. It's not recommended to put on new clothing into old garments. Let us continue. Matthew chapter 10, let us go back to Matthew 10. We read verse 8. We read, Heal the sick. Because from now on, God will give some principles for those who are sent. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Right? Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts, nor bag for your journey, nor to tunics, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Brothers and sisters, this portion here shows us that heal the sick, raise the dead, are by the action of the authority of God. It's not by the human capacity. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, sometimes men being a channel, and it's a proper channel, he is adequate to flow out God's authority, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, as God gave this authority to the twelve. So men think that this authority comes from him, it is through him that things happen. When I used to be a young man, we usually took a bus. There was a time that I was coming from, I don't know if it's from Sao Paulo to Sumaré or Sumaré to Sao Paulo. And before, this bus would go through the Campinas bus station. And on that way, uh, I saw a banner. He heals. He casts out demon. He, whatever, whatever. And I said, it should be Jesus. But no, it was Pastor such and such. Who has authority? It's not man. Who has authority is the one who sends. So do not forget that. Otherwise, you will be a pirate parrot thinking that you have all the powers, the parrot, but not the, the parrot. So the word that we received from the Lord when we are sent out by God, it is confirmed by the signs that are followed. This is in Mark 16, 20. I already used that many times, but let us read it. Matthew 16, 20. Because God was the one who sent us to preach the gospel. He said, Go into all the world. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. Right? 
These are the signs that will follow those who believe in my name. You will cast out demons. You will take serpents, if anything. Drink will cause them no evil. You put their hands on the sick one. They will be healed. In fact, the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, he was taken to heaven and sat on God's right hand. It says, the church went out to preach the gospel according to God's commandment. And out to preach the gospel, they went out, preached all over. The Lord went up to heaven, sitting on God's right hand. He came to cooperate with his church again. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Saints, when God sent his authority with authority, you go, well, it's not our authority that makes things to happen. It is the authority of God through the word. So he confirms the word he gave us. What is the word? The word, it is the command, are his instructions. The prophetic word will make us to go out. We, based on the prophetic word, on his authority, we do the work of God. The authority makes things happen with signs. Praise God. So it is not our, it is not our capacity. And the worker is worthy of his food, so it means that revelation is given for us for free. We received revelation for free, we give it away for free. Co-porters, they are working, many of them can use those verses to say, oh, but the co-porters are selling books. The co-porters are not selling the revelation of the word. Do you understand me or not? The Lord gave me a revelation to share this word with you. I'm not charging any money to say this revelation because I received it for free. I want I, I should give it for free. Do you understand it? And we are not going out on the streets. May I pray for you in each prayer? Ten reais. No, we are not charging for our prayers. We receive it for free. We give it for free. But the books have costs. Cost for printing, cost for distribution. So this is not to sell the word of God. This is, we are passing it on. Otherwise, who here received their Bible for free? Maybe that somebody received the Bible for free. But my Bibles, I buy them. There was someone saying, I'm selling the word of God. This is not the, the meaning. I can never charge for the revelation that God gave me. It was given for free. But the books have costs. And I praise God it's no shame that the worker who preaches the gospel to lives off of the gospel. But on the other hand, I'm seeing every week the co-putters, we are not working for money. We are working for the love of the Lord. In John 21, do you remember John 21? Peter was worried about his livelihood. When you are worried about your livelihood and put it first before God's things, everything will go wrong. Peter then said, I'll go fish. I'll go fishing because there's nothing to eat. And then his disciple said, okay, Jesus is gone. We don't know where he is. We don't know what's going to happen next. So we are coming with you. They went out to fish the whole night. They caught nothing. When we're worried about your livelihood, brothers and sisters, you catch nothing. And then Jesus comes, and Jesus said to them, Okay, so, uh, cast your net on the right side of the boat, and what happened? The whole night they caught nothing, the whole night. And they were expert fishermen, like a mirror. But that night, they cut nothing, but they what, what, when they did it according to the word, you see how important it is to believe in the word. They did it according to the word. What happened? They went, cast the net. They were not able to drag it. 
How many fish they had? 153. Small fish? Little ones? No. 153 big fish. This shows full of large fish. God wants he can supply us, sustain us with abundance. He can supply us abundantly whatever we need. So in our hearts, we have to be in serving the Lord, not in being worried about our livelihood. And then God, the Lord called Peter, because in Peter there is this influence of leadership. Peter comes here. Do you love me more than all these? Peter said, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, then, tender my sheep. And then you know the story. I want to repeat it. Three times the Lord asked him, meaning what? Before we are worried about our uh, livelihood, especially with the co-putter, I spoke to them a number of times before worrying about your livelihood. Worry about loving the Lord. And the love of the Lord for what? God loved us. This love which comes from God also make us to love the Lord. Lord that comes from the donor also make us a donor ourselves. What we receive from the donor we also return to him. We love God. When we love God out of us flows out horizontally. Do you understand? That is why the first five commandments it is to love God. Your, the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, with all your strength. The first and great commandment and the second similar to this one it is to love your neighbor as yourself. Meaning that you receive God's donation by being in the heavenly sphere. You receive God's love as God's donation. God himself comes to you. God has love. And with this love you love God, it is a two-way, it's a two-way. This makes you to flow out horizontally. In John 7, 37 through 39, on the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out, If you are thirsty, come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So if you receive the Lord, receive God who is love, out of you will flow out this love for others. Rivers of living water. Saints, that is the way that co-porting happens. When we're worried about your livelihood, it doesn't flow. When you love the Lord and love people, it flows out. It flows out. So, livelihood is a consequence. God will care for you. Lord Jesus, let us get back to Matthew chapter 10. Let us get there. In verse 11, And now whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go out. And when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If someone does not receive, if however will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Surely I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. That is why, brothers and sisters, we need to know, to be clear, that when we are sent by God, the one who receives us will receive peace. Are you having this experience? When anyone opens a heart and receives you because you are sent by God, peace goes to him and her or her. The one who does not receive it, say that I don't want it, peace will return to you. 
But the one who received Jesus as a sent one by God believes in his word. The work of God is done. This is in John 6, 29. Let us read it. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 29. This is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. When, if someone on the street, when he asks, may I pray for you, they receive you, brothers and sisters, the work. Who believe in the work that you share with him or her, this word will do work in his life or her life. Still, the books that you leave, leave with them in their hands, these books will perform great effects. Lord Jesus, let us continue then, Matthew chapter 10. Verse from 6 to 23 speaks of difficulties. So far we saw that God sends us. We are in peace. He cares for us. He cares for our livelihood. But now let us be warned also against the difficulties. Saints, it is not a bed of roses, not a blue sky to work in the Lord's work. We know that our teacher suffered very much on earth. So Saints, we are also willing to suffer. Isn't that right? So, on verse 16, what does it say? Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as servants and harmless as doves. Toward God, we must be always pure and simple. Always pure and simple. But toward people with bad intention, people want to cause damage to us, cause us evil. We cannot be naive. Do you understand? On the one hand, you have to be simple toward God. God spoke to you. Go and say, speak to that person. You go ahead and say, speak to him or her. You're pure toward God. But on the other hand, you are being sent uh, in the midst of wolves, if someone wants to cause you harm, you also need to be beware. You need what? You need to be prudent. Wise as a serpent. You see, a serpent will never let you get close, close by. It tries to bite you. If there's a certain distance to bite you. They will bite you. It is very wise. What is it called, that, that, that animal that, that takes a snake and tries to grab it by the by the, the tail and the serpent turns around because it's the, 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 the serpent is very wise. We need to be that prudent, that wise. There will be situations that we will uh, face people who are with bad intentions. People with bad intentions wants to make us bad. We cannot be naive. At that time, we have to have some malice, you know, to be aware, an awful fall for a trap, you know. That's what Jesus wants to speak to us. Verse 17 onward says, But be aware of men, for they will deliver you up for councils, to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, when they deliver you up, is that right? Do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Now a brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents, and cause them to be put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in the city, flee to another, for assured the city you will now have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. 
Saints, that's part of warning uh, on difficulties, speaks especially for the Jews, for them who lived in that environment of persecution in the synagogues and so on and so forth. It doesn't apply literally to us, but anyway, we can draw some principles here. What are the principles? There will be situations of religious intolerance, and they will begin. We will begin to face uh, religious intolerance in a while, for some time. In some countries, they are very religious intolerant. They do not allow to preach the gospel. Saints we should not fear that. We should not fear. And before authorities, whether uh, shopping mall security guards, whether uh, police officers, guardians, authorities, you know, you should not lose your temper. Keep your posture as someone sent by God. You, you do not need to argue with anybody. Do not argue with anybody. But people need to know that you are under the orders of the king. Someone gave you authority to preach the gospel as a sent one. Do you understand? You don't need to be afraid. Never lose your posture. Keep your dignity even under pressure. You may have pressures. This you are sent one by God. And don't worry about speaking. Don't make up things to speak. No, God will put words in your mouth. For the world hated Jesus. The world also hates us. John 7, 7. Let us read it. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, because it testify of it that its works are evil. Why the world hates Jesus? Because Jesus is the light of the world, showing that the, wor the works of the world is evil. And in John 15, John 15, verse... 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before. It hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. So, saints, it is not. You don't need to be worried. Oh, we are still going to this world. Sometimes we, we see many hostility. Don't worry about it. The world always afflicted Jesus. Not necessarily the people in the world, but I see the world as a system world system set up by Satan. Sometimes people who are invested on this authority comes to pressure you. It's not even her. They are uh, following orders. The system of the world hates us. But you can touch people. Even someone who is used to persecute you. You know, it is someone who was created after God's image and likeness. With a heart that it can go and like, may I pray for you? Do not be afraid. Verse 23, we read it. It, it, it looks terrible. Where is it? When they persecute you to a city, flee to another. This verse actually 
speaks of the situation, the Great Tribulation, among the Jews, okay, the Great Tribulation. You don't need to be alarmed with that. This is not our case. And then from verse 24, there it says, For us do not be afraid. Spokes of persecution, difficulties, but we don't, we're not afraid of difficulties. Because the Father cared for the workers he sends. Verse 24 says, Our disciples not above his teacher, nor servant above his master. Is it not for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master? If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what do you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Preach in the housetops. Well, saints, we need not we, we need not fear. We are servants of our master. We are not superior to our master. Everything that he went through, saints, we are willing to go through, aren't we? Our Lord Jesus, he suffered the greatest sufferings. We do not refer only to physical sufferings. You know that actually it's not much of physical pain that causes much pain, but the psychological one. So, saints, what did he do? Philippians 2, let us read it. Philippians 2. I wrote it in the King James updated, so let me read it what I, what I wrote here. Jesus being God, he, he emptied himself, taking on the form of, form of a bondservant, coming in the likeness of man. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So he was, this was our Lord Jesus, our teacher, and we follow this same step, same posture. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. So let us also give ourselves to the obedience to death because we know that God cared for us. Right? In Isaiah 53, let us read it. Isaiah 53. Lord Jesus. Isaiah 53, verse 3. Here we read. He is despised and rejected by men and men of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its sheeters is silent. He is our role model. If we go through that, brothers and sisters, we have a life inside of us which went through all of that. It's capable of supporting us, supplying us in this moment. And then Mark, Mark 14. Mark 14, verse 65, here we read. Then some began to spit on him. Did you hear that, that they spit on Jesus' face? And to began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him 
beat him and to say to him, Prophesy. And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. You know, the hand of a guardian, the, of an officer, is heavy. So he, he, this was our king, Mark 15, 16. Here we read, And the soldiers led him away to the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison. They were soldiers. They clothed him with purple, they twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head. Certainly the crown of thorns was sticking in Jesus' scalpel to be fixed. Imagine the suffering. And put it on his head and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the head with a reed and spat on him. And bowing, on, bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took the pur purple off him, put his own claws on him, and led him out to crucify him. This was our Lord, our King. He went through all of that. They called him Beelzebub, which means the Lord of the Flies. That was the name of the God of Ekron. This is in the second book of Kings 1 2. You can read that afterwards. The Jews changed his name to Baalzebel, which means the Lord of the Lord of the Dung, the Dung Hill. He became the Lord of the the Dung, the manure. The this was the the term used for the highest of the demons. This is in Matthew 12, verse 24. But when the Pharisees heard it. They said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. Verse 27, But if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. That is, this Lord, the ruler of the demons, he was... That was the worst insult that a man could say addressing to Jesus by the Jews. That is why, saints, his psychological suffering is much greater than the physical suffering. So we should have the awareness that when we're preaching the gospel of the kingdom, certainly we will not be received with arms wide open by the world under the control of Satan, the system in the world. For the world despised and rejected Jesus. Let us get to Matthew 10, 26. Lord Jesus, therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. This verse saints, Actually, it speaks to us to preach the gospel openly, with no fear, because we are preaching the gospel of the truth. He who has the truth has nothing to fear of. So, right? So we do not need to be hidden by anyone doing things hidden. No, we are preaching the gospel because we are preaching the very truth. We go up on a housetop and we preach. We don't need to hide. When this principle says that there's nothing covered that will not will not be revealed, this is also says this principle warns us for us to live with fear and trembling. Do not think that something that you're hidden, uh, you hide, will be hidden 
forever. One day we'll be brought up to understand. So we should live. But we are not. We don't have courage to show the saints. So we should not do that. If we don't have courage to expose to others. So it's better not to do that. Why? Because everything that you do hidden, one day will be revealed. So let us live in the light. And this will give us strength to preach the gospel, right? The preaching of the gospel saints also do not need to do anything hidden. We should open up our hearts and preach it. 2 Corinthians 6, 8. It says that sometimes we preach the truth and not the lie, but we have nothing to hide. But people think that we are deceiving others, right? You know that some people say you are deceiving others. So 2 Corinthians 6, 8, what does it say? Don't be afraid. 2 Corinthians 6, 8. By honor, and dishonor, a evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true. Sometimes, sometimes you have to run away from a security guard, right? Sometimes you go here or there. You look like deceivers, but you are true. You are preaching the truth. You're not preaching the lie. That is why we have nothing to hide. We're not afraid. We're preaching the gospel. John 18, 20 and 21. This message is addressed to those who preach the gospel. John 18, 20. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly. Let's, let us read 19 for you to understand the context. The high priest then asked Jesus about his disciples and his doctrine. This is the final question to condemn Jesus and to crucify Jesus. High priest, Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where the Jews always meet, and in secret I have said nothing. I have not, I have said nothing hid in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. That is why, saints, we have nothing to hide. Jesus also did not preach anything that needed to be hidden. We are also not preaching anything. We are not preaching lies. We are preaching the truth. We are true. That is why, saints, let us go up to a housetop. What is a housetop? On a roof, on the roof, on a terrace. Let us go out in full light. We should not be afraid. Let us go out in full light. Even people on the street to ask them, may I pray for you? bringing the gospel of the kingdom in the books. That is why, saints, it is good. Yesterday, praise the Lord, so many churches participating of the God's Feed Young One, many brothers and sisters, adults, not only the young ones, also went out and joined in this outing, praying for you. Many countries in North Amer South America also joined in. This is wonderful. But I was a bit worried that I see many teams going now to preach the gospel. Many of those people do not bring uh, the, the paper or books. Well, they miss out a great opportunity to, to leave a precious material in people's hands. Because our burden, it is the gospel of the kingdom. We need to bring people to be governed by the heavens, governed by God. So the book, the papers, it is quite important. We have to leave in people's hands. But also do not forget to bring their names for care. Let us take their contact number to care for them. Okay? Lord Jesus. First question it is, may I pray for you? The second question is, it is, you can say, we have a network of care. Do you want to be cared for? This is the second question. Want to be cared for? Many one wants to be cared for. So we are the salt of the earth. We are always ready 
to give meaning to people's lives which is meaningless. We are the light of the world to enlighten people enslaved by the empire of darkness. We are a city built on a, on a mountain. Our light is no longer under the bushel. Our livelihood is no longer covering our light. Our light is on the lampstand to shine everyone in the house, everyone around us. So, let us get to verse 28 now. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Do not fear those who will who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? Not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Saints, we should not be afraid. The maximum man can do with persecution and violence is that we praise the Lord. We're not in this moment yet. At the time of the church in, per the church in Smyrna, right? They were really killed, martyred. At the time of the Waldenses, were martyred by the Pope with Inquisition. That was something terrible. But saints, pray the Lord, we are living in an age. Still, we're not suffering this kind of thing. But anyway, saints, let us not be afraid. As much uh, maximum that somebody can do is to kill the body, but he cannot kill our soul. Or to put our soul in, in Hades. But God... If you do not please God, God has this authority. It's better to, to fear God, not man. Saints, I really, I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. One day it comes to me, the Lord knows. I'm only afraid of not being able to fulfill my, my career, not to finish my race, to fulfill my ministry. This is most important because I'm not afraid of death. We should not be afraid of physical death, okay? I have to fear the one who can make me to live a life of not being overcome. May the Lord be merciful to us. The Father cares for us. Not even a hair, even those things who are bald, not even a hair. The, the hairs of your head cannot fall without the Father's permission. And, Lord Jesus, where am I? Do not fear, therefore you are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confess me before men, him I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before man, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This refers to, brothers and sisters, to the matter of the reward. It's not the matter of losing salvation. There's no losing of salvation, but the lose of the reward. Saints, we want to live a life that confess the Lord before man, preaching the gospel, doing co-porting, taking the people to the kingdom of heavens. We do not deny the Lord's name. And in this way, on that day, when it says on that day, saints, it is before Christ's judgment seat. We will also confess our name before the Father. So since it is worth it, it is worth it. The Lord cares for us. Verse 34 onward. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace out, but sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Here shows that there is a war. There is a fight of two kingdoms. God has this kingdom, his dominion from eternity to eternity. Satan rebelled against God, did not return the authority that God had given him when he was 
positive kingdoms of the earth. He usurped the kingdoms of the earth, established a different authority. And God then wants to cast out this another kingdom and to set God's kingdom on earth. Therefore, saints, there is no conquer of territory or con of kingdoms without fight, without this kind of cheerfulness. So we who are serving the Lord, it's not that we should hate our father, mother, our husband, wife. It's not to hate them, but we are putting the Lord above all things. We're putting the kingdom above all things, right? So if they uh, require you to have a choice, there's an urgent need for God to use you for some task, for some situation, but at the same time, your family is requiring of you not to go. That time, you have to know how to make a choice. May the Lord give you wisdom. It is important for us to follow the Lord. This way will be a way of taking up our cross and to follow the Lord as in Matthew 16, 24. He who wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Uh, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You receive the salvation of your soul. So, saints, this is a way of the cross. It's not to do our will, it is to do the will of God, to deny our own will, to, to live aside my own comfort, what is best for me, even in regards to family. It is a way of those who is willing not to please his own soul, but to please the Lord and to follow the Lord. Okay, what is the result? The one who does that, saints, there is an identity, a total identity between the one who is sent and the one who sends. This sent one, the one, who, this, the one who, the sent one is the one who sends. Let me read it. He who receives me, ever receives a prophet, and the, the prophet will receive the reward of a prophet. The one who receives a righteous, the character of a righteous will receive the reward of a righteous. Uh, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. He who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Saints, what is a righteous man? It is to be right before God and before man. When God speaks a word and you obey the word, what are you doing? You're being righteous. And he who receives Jesus, a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. Look what we are representing. You're not just an ordinary person. You are a sent one by God. Last verse. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Look how beautiful this is. So may we, saints, to feel safe, let us feel safe and to feel uh, trusting that when we are sent by God, God is after us, God gives us authority, the one who receives us will receive the reward of a righteous man, the reward of a prophet. So may God more and more to be able to to have more sent ones. The Lord needs many of those sent ones to be willing to deny themselves, to deny their own comfort, what is best for themselves, to follow the king, for the king needs to bring his kingdom down to earth. And there are many people to be saved, to be rescued out of this slavery of darkness, of death, of corruption. We are sent, one, sent out for this work. May the Lord bless his church, bless more and more each one of us. May he use us 
to put an end to this age and to bring God's kingdom back to earth. Jesus is Lord. Amen.